Alright, so here we go with part three of off-camera secrets for Majora's Mask. I still couldn't figure out those footsteps from the last video, but I did notice that wherever these floating skulls go is where the footsteps follow, so maybe it's a glitched out collision between the skull and water. Anyways, these videos have been very interesting to work on, and I'm so satisfied with the kind responses I've been getting. With all of that said, let's begin with our first pick, which will be the alien scene. So go into the scene where the aliens show up. If we slip into playability, we can see that the whole scene actually takes place at the ranch. It's just really dark. I think this might actually be my favorite lighting now. So we have these aliens over here spawned behind the camera, ready to act when it's their turn. We can also see this cow out here doing the same. Lastly, the ship they apparently spawn on is actually just a bright globe with sun effects added to it. Now let's play through the alien segment and let the aliens win. When we clip through the ground, we can see that all the aliens are actually lined up in a chain as they begin to rise up with their carried objects. Now let's go back to this part of the intro sequence. If we slip into playability, we can visit this version of the town center. It's empty and for some reason the lighting feels a lot different than what it normally would be. We can also see how the moon is at a different angle than what it normally would be at this close. When you go to another day, it just displays a banner instead of actually changing the day's state. Alright, the next discovery is the Giants. I got a comment about this one, I'm so glad to share with you what happens. So, as soon as we slip into this scene, the Giants begin to slowly descend through the ground unless you slip in before they grab the moon. Also, if we touch the moon at all during this scene, it completely crashes the game. So here's the really cool discovery. The Skull Kid in this part of the scene actually has a hitbox. It looks like clumps of dirt pop up as you slash into him, but was this just a collision box for the mask to hang on to for the scene? Or was there more to this part of the game that was changed during development? So let's get to the game over screen. What you're seeing is actually just the mask in front of a flame. Nothing unusual, but if we go back here, we can see an unused mask just chilling in the background. I think this might have been used for another scene, but it's pretty cool to see how the scenes both take place next to each other. Alright, tune in next week for part 4 which we're going to be covering the first half of the credit sequence. There's going to be a lot more to go over, so if you aren't subscribed, go ahead and join in on the fun. We've got some Twilight Princess videos coming up pretty soon, so be on the lookout for those. All in all, stay safe and take it easy.